Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Today, I have a component that I want to powder coat, but it's too big for the shake and bake method, and I still don't have an electrostatic powder spray gun, so I'm going to use the WD-40 method, and while I'm at it, I figured I might as well demonstrate the process for the benefit of anyone else who might be interested. Now, the item that I want to powder coat is a fairly complex shape, and it's made out of aluminum. Some of you may recognize what this is, but its function is really not relevant for the purpose of this video. This process should work about equally well on just about any component that is made out of aluminum or steel. Of course, the first step is to clean the item that we want to coat. So I'm going to do that by putting it in a bucket of simple green degreasing solution and scrubbing it with an old toothbrush until I'm sure that I've removed any grease or loose dirt and debris from the surfaces that I intend to coat. Now, the one part of this component that I don't want to coat is some internal threading. So I'm going to stuff a wooden plug into the threaded hole. The wooden plug serves a dual function because it will also give me something to hold on to so I can manipulate the part without touching the powder as I'm applying the coating. Next, I put some WD-40 on a shop rag and wipe down the part until there is a thin film of WD-40 on all the surfaces that I want to powder coat. Then I'm ready to apply the powder. In this case, I'm using Eastwood Hot Coat Semi-Gloss Black Powder, and to apply it, I simply put some powder in an old salt shaker, or rather a previously emptied bottle of parsley flakes that has a shaker top on it. I sprinkle the component generously with this powder, and then tap it lightly to knock loose any excess, leaving a uniform coat of powder adhering to the WD-40 film. It looks like there were some areas that I missed with the WD-40, so I'm going to put some WD-40 on a cotton swab and go back over the areas where the powder isn't quite sticking. Then I just sprinkle some more powder on those areas, and again, knock loose any excess. Once the part looks like it is uniformly coated all over, I place it in a toaster oven, resting on a sheet of non-stick aluminum foil, and bake it at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour. Now the part has been baked and had a chance to cool. Interestingly enough, it looks like my wooden plug contracted significantly when heated, but I guess that doesn't really matter at this point. What does matter is that the powder coating is now fully cured. The coat isn't perfect. It looks like there were a couple spots that I missed after all, and this method will probably never yield quite the aesthetic uniformity of a professional powder coating job using professional equipment. However, for those of us who don't have the professional equipment, this coating is substantially more adherent and durable than what I could get with a can of spray paint. I should probably also mention that the powder coating layer is on the order of a few thousandths of an inch thick, which is just enough that I had to do a little bit of refitting for pins in holes and other tight tolerance mating surfaces when I reassembled this component with the other components that it interfaces with. In this case, the required refitting was minimal and very easy, but depending on what you're coating, this might or might not be an issue, so it's something to be aware of. Anyway, I hope you found this demonstration helpful, or at least entertaining, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show!